Hi, today we're going to read Psalm 40, Deuteronomy 8, and Luke 22. Psalm 40, my help and my deliverer, to the choir master, a psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord, your, my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare to you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. And sacrifice and offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance and the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, O Lord, I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me, and your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. For evils have encompassed me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head. My heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who be put to shame and disappointed altogether who seek to snatch away my life, let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha! But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord! As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. Deuteronomy 8. Remember the Lord your God. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fear, by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the land, good land he has given you. Take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and you are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Beware lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And if you forget that the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Luke 22. We're going to read about several things today. There's the plot to kill Jesus, Judas to betray Jesus, the Passover with the disciples, institution of the Lord's Supper, who is the greatest, Jesus foretells Peter's denial, scriptures must be fulfilled in Jesus, Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives, betrayal and arrest of Jesus, Peter denies Jesus, 
Jesus is mocked, and Jesus before the council. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. And he went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the crowd. So, I mean, if you just think about that for just a minute. So the chief priests <clears throat> were trying to figure out how are we going to put him to death? You know, because they were afraid of people. So all they could do was kill him, right? And so Satan used that. He entered Judas and went away and conferred with them, talking to them about how he you know, could get them to betray him. <clears throat> and they consented to it. So, he, so they did that. Then the day came of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb has to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Hey, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. And they said to him, Well, where we have us prepare it. And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered a city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it, just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So they're sitting there dividing it among themselves, right? And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out of you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it could be who was going to do this. And a dispute arose among them also as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For who is greater, one who reclines at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you as my father assigned to me a kingdom that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, like he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times that you know me. And he said to them, When I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, Nothing. He said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it, and a likewise a knapsack, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Can you, let's go back and read that again. Okay, so he just went a little bit of a distance from them and knelt down and was praying. So Jesus was praying. Can you imagine, like you know what you're about to experience and go through, and you're willing to do it, but you know how awful it's going to be. So you're asking, like, is there any other way? Like, I'll do it, but is there any other way? Please. You know, so just imagine the trembling and the stress and the, 
you know, he knows what's coming, but he loves us, so he's doing it, right? So, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And it was so bad. And there <clears throat> appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. God sent him comfort. It was so bad. God sent him angels to comfort and strengthen him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. And when he was still speaking, there came a crowd. And the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. And he drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when then those who were around him, what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. And then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, have you come out as a, against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house as Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. And then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I, don't, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Okay, so Jesus, they led Jesus away. They're like doing all their stuff of like, Bleh, we got you, Jesus, you know, and like talking to him and all this stuff he's going through. Like, here, we brought you here. Man. You know, so this is all going on with Jesus right now. And he knows that Peter just denied him three times. You know, and Peter didn't even seem to realize what he was doing. Man, no, I'm not. Man, no, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, but then can you imagine... And this is kind of how it is for us. Like we sin and then we feel it like, oh my gosh, I've just sinned. You know, sometimes, you know, so like you're doing something. But can you imagine, like before the words were even out of his mouth, what all this stuff was going on with Jesus, he stopped and looked at Peter. Can you imagine, like you're out there by the fire and you, you know, denied him three times. Jesus is going through all this stuff and you're kind of waiting to see what was going to happen. And his attention turns to you. Can you imagine Jesus' face turning and looking to Peter? Like, see, now you got to go help the others. Like, Jesus knew. Like, they made that connection, I, the eye contact, you know, like, oh, my gosh. And it just sunk in all over Peter. And he went and wept out bitterly because, oh, my gosh, I denied him three times just now. Well, you know, like, how awful he must have felt. But Jesus knew that he was going to be fine and told him to help the others. So he had already forgiven him. He already knew what he was going to do. And he said to use it. Go help the others because you're going to do this and use that to help other people. Right? Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy! Who is it that struck you? And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him. And when day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council, and they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe so that you can continue to join in on the daily Bible study. Like and share with everyone else so they can join in too. You never know who needs encouragement. 
Don't forget that Jesus loves you, and I pray you have a blessed day.